There is a definite gap between where you are today and where you're trying to go. That's why you're in this room. I asked Jimmy to put together this presentation, and I know he will not disappoint. He rocked the stage in January, so give it up for Mr. Jimmy Vreeland. Thanks, Leon. Who has heard of this book, The Gap in the Game? Maybe we could talk about what puts out that fire to relentlessly execute, and that is being in the gap. If that is my superpower, being in the gap is kryptonite to that superpower. It shuts me down, it stops me. So you guys are probably asking, all right, all right, Jimmy, what's the gap? What qualifies me to talk about this is I am a frequent flyer in the gap. Don't make the mistakes I did in the beginning where I was in the gap in a, in a bad mood, in a non-optimistic mood, and the team could see it. If that is one leadership mistake I've made, it is that. Here was my quick math. I was like, all right, I did 25 flips and I made 20 grand. That was awesome. And this was 2018. So why don't I just do 100? And I thought success came in a straight line at that point. On pure hustle alone, we're gonna do this. So how do you guys think my next 25 to 75 flips went? An absolute train wreck. Change orders, forgetting to put in air conditionings. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong. And it was absolutely miserable. And then I would come home and I would just wanna be pulling my hair out. And my poor dear wife, Susie, she had to deal with this emotional roller coaster of, I'm so excited, we're gonna scale, to, oh my God, we are so bad at so many things. I was getting better every week. I was making so many mistakes, but I was learning from them. And that was gap thinking. So here is the gap in the game to define it. You are in the gap when you are measuring from where you start to your ideal. It's the main thing is that if you're measuring against your ideal, it is a very dangerous and very bad idea. Now, game thinking is this. When you measure from where you're at to where you start, you're always in the game. It's a very simple concept, but very powerful. Remember, measure from where you're at to where you started. That is the game. What is going on with all these high energy, high level entrepreneurs who should be happy? Like what's happening? Why are they have a chronic scowl? It's because these people are always measuring against their ideals and not where they came from. When I'm at my worst, I expect perfection as a minimum requirement. And that is what a perfectionist does, is the reason they fail is because their minimum requirement is perfection. My big targets, my big dreams are simply a horizon. They get me moving, they get me going, but like if you're swimming to the horizon, are you ever going to reach it? And are you always going to be miserable during that swim? So that's what being in the gap is. And vision is basically a picture of a future desirable event that enables us to move forward. Once I understood gap in the gain and I could start using this power of being able to foresee the future the correct manner, I, it started serving me and I, it stopped making me miserable. When are we happiest? We're happiest when we use our mind to visualize, then we use our body and mind to achieve, and then we measure that progress. So here comes the critical error, how you can go into the gap. But can you measure the future? Is it possible? Yes or no? Yes. You can measure into the future? No. <laughs> You're confusing me now. I'm not bagging on visions and dreams and goals. It's mathematically impossible to measure against them. So back to the three requirements for happy, happiness. We use our minds to visualize progress, to visualize the future, create a mental construct of what the future is. Then we use our actions to achieve that progress by going to zero to one, by implementing, by achieving. And then the third and most critical part is you have to measure that progress. When I first walked in here, I couldn't stand financials. I couldn't stand accounting until I recognized that it was my scoreboard and it's how I measured. Once I started figuring out financials and whatnot, I was like, wait a minute, now I can play a game with a scoreboard. This game got a lot more fun. So also keep in the back of your mind, you need three requirements to be happy in business and happy in life. You need to be able to visualize progress. You need to be able to act towards that. And then you need to be able to measure it. The only thing place we can measure is to measure backwards from where you started to where you're at now. That's the game. That creates more inspiration, more fun, more energy. Like when I'm in the game, I can take any idea I see in this room and then boom, 60 days, it's up and running. And I'm having fun doing it. I'm failing. I'm figuring it out, but I'm loving it and I'm in the zone. Now that I understand the gap in the game, I'll still hit some road bumps, and my wife will be like, hey, dumbass, you're back in the gap. Those, that's gap thinking, gap thoughts. You teach people about this, you should be better than this, and then I'm like, yep, that's a game thought, that's a gap thought too, but I'm gonna, you're right, I'm gonna knock myself out of it. So at that point, I'll go to jujitsu, I'll go work out, I'll go play with my kids, I'll do something physical 
to snap me out of it once I recognize it. But just like Eric said, it's not about going into the abyss or it's not about getting a case of poopy pants. That's gonna happen. It's how long you stay there. So what does measurement lead to? It leads to seeing growth and progress. It leads to learning lessons. And then it leads to seeing other gaps that you could not previously see. Your blind spots get taken away. If you're always focused on the future, you're never gonna look at your current blind spots. You're gonna to, going to want to ignore it. Your ideals are not targets. They're not something you measure against. Have you ever reached your th current three-year target? You've never hit it because you keep expanding it. It's the horizon. Now I'm assuming most of your one-year targets you do hit because those are specific. But once you get into dreaming phase, once you get into visionary stage, that's your three-year and 10-year target. And here's what I will predict. You will always keep pushing it. It'll always be the horizon. And if you're measuring towards that horizon, what will you be in the gap? Will you be happy? Will you have the space to implement more, the space and the energy to implement more? So think of your big dreams, think of your big targets and accept they're always gonna expand and that you can live in a blissfully discontent manner about that. And it's just like swimming towards the horizon. If you're swimming the English Channel and all you're doing is looking at the horizon, you'll quit. But now if you look backwards and see all the progress you're made, you'll keep going. So just think as the gap in the game as swimming across the English Channel and to keep going, do not keep looking at the horizon, but look backwards. And I also think this is a dangerous mistake because people live in the gap. I believe they'll dream smaller. I believe they'll set smaller targets. So it is dangerous. At the end of the day, it's your choice to live in the gap or to live in the game. And it's a daily choice to be a successful business owner. You have to survive any part of the market cycle. Nobody who here wants to be a one trick pony who here wants to only be able to succeed when interest rates are zero. Revenue is vanity, profit is sanity. What I remember of COVID was awesome because all the stuff I was doing that I recognized was sloppy at the time, it got cut because it had to get cut. And so we got better, we got leaner, we got tighter. The market was at its hottest. Like you could buy a house, windex the windows and sell it for 50, 60 more grand. Regardless of the market cycle, regardless of the interest rate, regardless of what's going on, it's get better, get leaner, get tighter, take what the market's giving you. That's game thinking, that's living in the game. Your job as a business owner, as a leader, is to clearly articulate, develop, and improve and act on your decision-making criteria. When do you do the personal stuff? Is that a morning thing for you? I do the wins and the gratitudes every 20 minutes before I go to sleep. At the end of every quarterly on EOS, we just, as a team, we look at it, be like, here are our big wins from this quarter. Let's take a quick review of where we came from. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you make over 300K per year, I think my program could be great for you. We're gonna find beat up houses, like this one behind me that we just started rehab in. I don't know if the video is doing justice to how bad these floors is. And then let me take you through a spin here. This is the kitchen. Don't know if there is no kitchen, but our investors love deals like this because they know in three weeks, this is going to be a beautiful kitchen waiting for either a new homeowner or a new resident to rent. So if you're interested in investing in real estate in a completely passive manner and want someone to find the house, to fix the house, to find a tenant or help you sell it, click the link below to book a call.